Well, we're hoping to find are what are called the lazy stones, which are stones that were cut from the major basalt deposit and never moved to Cusco. And so we're going to also, of course, be looking for tool marks because you basically see no tool marks in the stone at Coricancha. And because of the finesse and um, excellent profound detail of the stonework, which is beyond, some people say, beyond 21st century uh, stonemason technology, we're going to see if we can find evidence that there was a culture before the Inca that had lost ancient high technology. So that stone from the river was used for working the hard stone. So we're going through the Inca period quarry here. They're broken stones all, all around, even some river stones, as was shown in a previous clip of granite that was used to do the shaping. But what we're looking for are megalithic, much, much bigger stones, because in general the Inca used smaller stones that were easy to handle, and in general, they used stone from the Cusco area. If they didn't have to go 50 kilometers to get the stone, why would they bother? But the megalithic people did. They always would build a building or construction from one quarry. They never mixed stone together because the properties of that stone, for some reason, was very special to them. So here we have an Inca period piece of stone that was being shaped, <clears throat> but you see how rough the rough all of the edges are. This is not like the fine work that we find in the Coricancha of much larger stones. So these are the sleeping places of the, the workers, these niches, during Inca times. So first possible evidence of a larger stone. This would weigh several hundred pounds. And since the only beast of burden the Inca had was the llama, which could carry maybe 50 pounds, um, how did they move stones like this, but much, much, much bigger? So here's our first good piece of evidence. This building is Wadi, at least a thousand years old, and this used to be the lintel. That's a finely shaped block of the basalt. So that piece likely predates this construction, meaning that this is our first evidence in this location of ancient megalithic. And here again you see what would be, or was, standard Wadi construction which is broken pieces of stone piled on top of each other, but they used this piece as the lintel. And the weathering on that piece is extensive, so it's quite possible that they found that piece as a byproduct of the megalithic builders, and of course utilized it in their own construction.
So we found the quarry part where the stones of the quarry cancha were shaped. Here's an example of a test piece here. Those two fit together very well. The stones uh, in the quarry cancha in general, are, they're not megalithic, they're not huge in size, but they are they represent most likely the finest stone-on-stone -stone construction in the Americas, technically almost perfect. The Inca maybe were able to do that kind of work, but most engineers and stonemasons who look at it say, you can't do this with stone or bronze tools. In fact, even in modern day, it would be very hard challenge to construct the quarry cancha. But that's why we've come to the quarry, to see the actual evidence. And we are. 50 kilometers away from Cusco. Here's an unfinished piece. You notice the glint, all of that mica in it. This one was probably destined for the Cori Cancha, but never made it there. So this is the evidence. We see partially finished stones in here. So after 10 years, I'm finally in the quarry of the stones for the Cori Cancha. <sighs> Again, if the Inca did build that, how? With what kind of tools? Because you can't fit a human hair in the joints. And they had stones to work with, and they had bronze chisels to work with, and meteorite hammers, but the story just becomes, rather than solved, more perplexing.